We actually saw that if you make a, a third point, C, right here, and you actually go from C to B, that it, um, it goes faster. So then the next logical step is, well, what's the fastest point from point A to point C? Straight line. And then you keep going. And then you, yeah, it's not actually a straight line. It's uh, something like that. So you go like that, and now, oh, that's the fastest one there. It's a curve, and my artistic abilities are not too great. But what Galileo concluded that the fastest point from point A to point B was an arc of a circle. Now, can you guys look at this? Can you see if this is a, an arc of a circle? Yes. Yeah. You think it is? It's close. Galileo is close, and the circle is much faster than a straight line to get to point A to point B. But it is incorrect. And the correct problem, or the correct answer is what is known as a cycloid. Have you guys seen cycloids before? No. no. All right. Well, to draw a cycloid, first I have a straight line. And if you take a circle like this, this is why it's my secret tape, um, and you rotate it and move it along, one point on the outer edge will outline a, a cycloid. So I'll try to replicate one here. that it's not quite a circle, correct? All right. So this is known as a cycloid, and it was a solution to the Brachistikon problem. Well, Johann did this. He actually have already had it solved. And the reason why he wanted to do this is because he wanted to get another big name. Who was the other big name now during 1697? You guys all know. What? 1697. Uh, who's the big name in physics? Newton. Newton, that's right. Isaac Newton was kind of in retirement for a long time. He had uh, said that he was done with physics, he was done with math, and he started working at the uh, English Mint, which is where they make uh, money. So, Johan made this as a challenge to him to see if he could get him out of hiding. And the story goes that Newton came home from work one day at 4 in the afternoon, saw this problem on his desk, and he sat down, and he didn't go to sleep until he solved it. And that was at 4 in the morning. So it took him 12 hours to solve this pretty complex problem. So it just shows uh, how smart Newton was. And Newton is such a jerk. He's, this is what he's quoted as saying, I do not love to be pestered and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. So Newton pretty much just laughed at Johann's know, attempt to, to get him out of hiding. Um, as it turns out, Newton uh, emailed, or not emailed, <laughs> <laughs> mailed, mailed his letter to Bernoulli with a few other people, uh, one of them also being Johann, or Johann's brother, Jacob Bernoulli. And this actually started a family feud as Jacob then counted with another problem that Johann should, Johann should have solved. And Johann, Johann, yeah, Johann, once again, encountered with a problem, and there, there was this huge family feud. But it was actually great because it brought along calculus variations, and once you guys all go to college and decide to become physics majors, because I know you all will, right? 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 You guys will learn all about calculus and variations. Um, but the Rakistikon problem is not done. There is also other fascinating things about this. Can you guys see this? Yeah, so that, that's a cycloid. And what, is this, what do we know a cycloid does? Alright, so let's see how fast that goes. Wow, that's, that's lightning fast. That's approaching the speed of light right there. So my next question is this. If I place a car up here, and I place a car right here, which one's going to get to the bottom faster? Green one? Why do you think the green one is? It's going to get to the bottom. Yeah, to get to like this point fastest. Okay. Is that a lot more to go faster? Yeah, it's going a lot faster. It's going a lot faster? Greg, what do you think? I don't know. Okay. 
Same time, Nate? Same. Alright, so I'll try my best and I'll release them at the same time. Is everyone looking at the bottom part? No, I think it's the red one now. Very good, we'll see. What would you guys think? Not the same? Alright, well, Aaron was using her high speed camera, so we're going to find out for sure. I'll do it again. You think it's the red one? Yeah. Alright. So she's going to show one side. I'm going to do even a more drastic difference, alright? I'm going to drop one from here and from one from here. And the left side, you guys can look at this. I'll show you this after this. So let me make sure that this is on the track. Yeah, I have this one. There you go. Everyone watching? What do you think? I thought that was the same? Yeah. Even though this one like started here and this one started here? Yeah. All right. Regardless, we're not breaking any laws of physics here. Or this is actually math. But what's up, baby? Pretty cool, right? So you learned some physics? Learned a little history? What's up, Aaron? <laughs> I think this is not meant to be out. Uh... This never happens to anybody when you're driving. <laughs> Somebody looks up the whole road. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're okay with uh, disrupting all of uh, your family's, you know, harmony, then you can go and challenge your brothers on different math and different physics questions, and you can develop new math things. Now we're going to do a little uh, transfer to a different topic. And what have you guys been seeing the past couple of days? Austin. Austin. <laughs> All right. Well, in, in tops, I should say, specifically. Uh, uh, energy and light. Energy. Well, I don't care about light, so let's talk about energy. What was the first day? We saw... Work. We saw work. Oh, we saw the... The ball. What? Say that again. Louder, kid. Transferring energy. Yeah, we saw energy go from one thing to another, right? So the first day was, and. Oh, the ball thing. Yeah. What? What type of energy? Uh, gravitational potential and kinetic. Yep. And now, Nate, can you tell me what we learned about earlier today? With Aaron. Elastic potential energy, that's right. So now we're going to look at one more different energy transfer. And this one is gravitational potential energy into thermal energy. What? That's, yeah, that's exactly one of the ways we go about it. So let's develop an experiment to find gravitational going into thermal. How do we make gravitational potential energy turn into kinetic energy? Um, we drop something, that's right. So what do you think we have to do to make gravitational potential energy turn into thermal energy? Um, Didn't it? Didn't we just move it? Wait, say that again, Nate? Okay, I like where we're going. So we have this idea, we need to drop a lot. Alright, let's build on that. And I don't need to interrupt you. Okay, so move. Oh, it's too long. I'm sorry. Any ideas? So, okay, so if we, oh, wait, we drop it on a ramp. So, marble, we just drop it on a ramp. And what happens? If it rolls in advance, it will make contact. Oh, can you take me back and forth with some kind of container? Oh, dude, you just skipped a whole bunch of steps. Alright, so explain to the class what you're thinking about. Um, well, well, I put the idea of keep on. You can keep dropping it and then creating friction because it keeps rolling back and forth. So, you, and why do you want to do it in a closed container? So, it's fall. <laughs> <laughs> so it's to trap the heat. Both, I mean, both reasons are great because to fall out and add. To, to trap the heat, that's exactly right. Have you guys been so, talking to the first period or the first class? No. You guys are just really smart. I was just checking. I mean, wow, those, these are the bosons. Uh, Alright, so what, we're, what are we actually going to do? 
So let's say I have a container lying about. Just happen to have this. <laughs> so here's my container. What do I want to? Or I put something at the bottom. If I rotate this, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. It's going to fall. So what is that gravitational potential energy turning into? Kinetic. Yeah. And then what happens at the bottom here? It hits something. It hits something. And what does that mean about it? Is it moving anymore? No. So what does that tell you about its kinetic energy? It doesn't have any. But what about the gravitational potential energy? So what is, what is one of the things on the very important board? So that energy had to go somewhere. Where do you think that went? Yeah. Remember sound for later. That'll be the bane of you. All right. So before we were just transferring gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. But what if I don't get? What if I don't like kinetic energy being an option? It's got to go somewhere, right? And like you said, that sound, thermal. We're transferring gravitational potential energy into thermal energy. So what's your next question? How do we skip how do we skip one step? Well if we put a stopper right here, then it stops moving, right? So what's the next step? After thermal? Yeah, well uh, we're designing this experiment. What's what's the next thing we need to know? By attaching something. Yeah. Right? So. What did we find out before? We know what gravitational potential energy is. Yeah. Yes. And the exact thing is the transfer of thermal energy, alright? So that's exactly right. We need, just like we have MGH and one half mp squared, we need a formula for the transfer of thermal energy. And how many of you guys cook? My dude, help me out with this, all right? When you're cooking something, what are you doing? You're trying to and heating it. And heating it. And specifically, what are you giving it? Just energy, in that, all right? So the first thing that we have to do, Q. Q is equal to the energy that we're giving the system, all right? Say that again. MC delta T. MC delta T. And Samu, right? Simone. Yeah. Simone. Simone. <laughs> Simone. What does the M stand for? Mass. Nate, can you get can you tell me why mass is involved there? Some real world example? That's exactly right. So if I have a small pot of water on the stove, and I have a large pot of water on the stove, which one's going to boil first? Small pot. You guys have all seen this, right? And if you watch it, it's not going to boil at all. Sorry, did I take that over? <laughs> you can say it. Everyone forget I said it. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we have M. Okay, have you seen this formula before? You think so? What do you think C was? Do you remember all that? So like the specific items. Specific, yeah. So close. Specific 